we go. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another very special Tuesday edition of having special guests. We scour the globe to bring you only the finest and most interesting people to share about their experience with Chabad. And tonight we have, as you see, a split screen, one you'll recognize, which is Rabbi Yisrael and his wife Shlomit Epstein, who we've had on already as the Shluchim at Chabad at University of South Carolina. It's also my nephew and niece, so we're honored to have them. And I reached out to them and asked them if they could bring us a highly talented, very interesting uh, participant in their Chabad house. And they said they would. They had the perfect guy, David, who you see joining us on the screen. Tonight's uh, learning and discussion is dedicated to the memory of Bilha Bastavorov Abraham. Nira asked us to please remember. She apologizes that she can't be with us, but we're honored to have everyone with us. So first of all, good evening, David. Thank you so much for agreeing to join us. I know you're on summer break and you got lots of other things to do, but we really appreciate you spending some time with us. So welcome. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. So let me give you a little background and try to describe what it is that we do. So when COVID started, you know, two years plus ago, so of course everybody was very concerned and we were very isolated. So we came up with this idea of having a little class, just 10, 15 minutes uh, every weeknight. At that time, we were talking about how to prepare your house and for Passover because everybody was suddenly finding themselves at home. And it was such a great success and, and a lot of fun in real life that we decided let's keep doing this throughout the year. So here we are two and a half years, or whatever it is, into it. And almost every night we got some learning. And about a year and a half ago, we decided, and people are tired of listening to me, let's go find some interesting people to talk about their experience and their life and share who they are. And we had Rabbi Sruli on, we had his father on, I used up all my friends, I've uh, talked to everybody who I know. And we've had the, we had the Shliach who had a Seder in Nigeria, we had a guy who went to Ukraine this year for Pesach during the war, oh. uh, and so on. So we decided, hey, let's stop talking only to the rabbis, because you know how these rabbis are, they go on forever. Let's talk to some really interesting people who come and participate in Chabad activities. So a couple of weeks ago, we had a student who's very involved at Chabad at Kansas. Last week, we had a, a young woman who was very involved in the C-Teen program. And tonight, we're honored to have you. So. A, thank you. We really appreciate it. We know it's later there and so on. But introduce yourself to us. Tell us who you are. What's your background? Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? You know, give us a little sense of who uh, David Moryosef is. Yeah, so I'm David Moryosef. I'm going to be a sophomore this coming year at the University of South Carolina. Go Gamecocks. Um, yeah, go Gamecocks. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm a first generation American here. My Both of my parents are from Israel. Um, and I've been I've been born and raised in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, so not too far from University of South Carolina's campus. And I am the treasurer at Chabad at University of South Carolina at the moment. So I'm oh, wow. really good for that. And yeah, and I'm an uh, international business major. And that's a little bit about me. OK, so we, you first show up at the university uh, last year, I guess. Right. You, you were a freshman. You come to college. Uh, how did you meet? Uh, the Epsteins, how did you become involved with Chabad? Can you walk us through that? Was that a part of your plan when you went to university or how, how did you first meet them? Yeah, absolutely. So since I'm from Myrtle Beach, so it's literally two and a half hours away. So I've known many of people that have gone to the University of South Carolina and they've always talked about how, even though you're away from home, you always have Chabad to go to and it's a great time. So I was like, awesome. Like, so if I go here, when I go to college, I'll have somewhere to go and uh, like to meet new Jewish people and all this stuff. So a lot of my friends like were um, like talking about it. Then I was able to be introduced to Rabbi Sruli and Shlomit on a Zoom call. We had a little pre-college meeting and we had we talked about some things we're looking forward to the year. And then I finally got the chance to go to the first event, which was the welcome barbecue for all the freshmen and everyone that wanted to be involved. And I had a great time, met everybody, uh, a lot of new people, and I've never looked back. Wow, fantastic. It's beautiful. So let, let me uh, give us a sense. Like, did you know anybody else who was already at the Chabad, involved with Chabad at USC before you went, or you just sort of jumped right in? So other than uh, 
the few people from my hometown that um, come like that have been through uh, through in and out of like how about at USC I really didn't know uh, almost anybody going so it was really like kind of like a I was kind of nervous going into it and I was like hopefully I meet a lot of new friends and hopefully I fit in and I absolutely did and I met so many new friends that I'm still in touch with even through the summer and looking forward to seeing them again next year. Okay, so help us understand, because some people who are on the call here, maybe they have uh, sons or daughters or nieces or nephews who may be going off to university, and we and they would love to see them get involved with Chabad or their campus, but maybe the kids are shy or they don't know anybody. What can a, a young man or woman just arrive in campus, probably a little overwhelmed, probably a little weighed down with all their classes, and they might be a little shy. What can you sort of describe would be an experience for a freshman um, boy or girl to knock on the door of their Chabad at whatever campus they find themselves at throughout the United States? What can they kind of expect? Yeah, so from what I know from Chabad is just once you get into that door, it's literally your home away from home. And you should never feel shy or intimidated by anybody there. And everybody's welcome, no matter how religious you are or from what backgrounds you have. So I think it's a great place, you know, to go, especially if you're looking to make new friends or if you're coming far away from out of state, because you always know it's a good place to come to. And if you ever need anything, they're always there to help. Um, so I think like people that are like shy, they should definitely make the leap and try your best because everyone there is going to be a little shy. Like we have people from all the way from Arizona. We have people from uh, like New York. We have New Jersey. We got South Carolina. We got it from everywhere. So everyone's looking to meet new people and everyone's a little shy and intimidated at first, but once you make that first step, it's you just keep on going okay. and it's a great, great environment. So help us understand how I'm sure you're very busy. You said you're an international business major. I'm sure you got a lot of classes and a lot of work to do. How did Chabad sort of fit in? I mean, people go to college. They got to go to class. They got other social activities, sports mm -hmm. and so on. What is it like? What is your sort of during the school year? What is your involvement with Chabad look like? Is it once a week, once a day, once a month, once in a while? Give us a feel for what that looks like. Yeah. So being on the board, I try to go at least once a week or so. And it's also just a great environment to be whether I want to go to a Shabbat dinner or if it's a holiday that week or we have like some type of hangout social event. Um, so I always try to go at least once a week. Um, it's a great place, you know, Everyone's missing home in college, and sometimes you just want to let loose from all your classes and stress. And so you go there, and it's really a chill environment. It's not like they're forcing you to learn Torah or forcing you to sit down and study something with them. It's really chill and relaxed, and everyone's having a good time. Uh, we involve learning and having fun and food, so it's always a great time, and you just feel at, almost at home, which is what I feel like everyone needs throughout their week in college. So uh, I definitely, especially as an honor student, I always have a lot of uh, homework and stuff like that, but I always make sure to try to at least to make it to a little bit of events or even some people make it once a month or two and they still enjoy it and it gives them a lot of relief. So can you get, help us understand um, what's your relationship like with the rabbi and Shlomit? Like what's that like at a personal level? You didn't know them, I don't think, before you came to, right. to, to school. So what's that been like uh, in the year in, to two years that you've been in uh, USC? Yeah, so I feel like I've known them now forever because it's just we've gone so close over the years. You know, we've both become very close. And then also I've become close with their kids. So it really just feels like I'm they like, have pretty uh, cute kids, don't they? They have amazing kids, yeah, <laughs> all three of them. But it just feels like honestly, it just feels like a family. Like you just walk in and you're like instantly adopted. Boom, <laughs> like this is your new family. Um, and it's not, I never had any issues with them. They've always been so understanding of anything, so helpful. Like one time I got sick and they're like, you need soup and all this stuff. So, you know, that goes a long way to show that you're really like part of a new, like big family here at Chabad. Have you participated in any of the Chabad activities outside of just the ones on campus? Like we've heard before about the Shabbatones and so on. Have you gone to any of those or participated with students at different Chabads? Has it grown beyond uh, your involvement in USC or not yet? What's that been like? Um, so not too much. I don't think Chabad specific events, but I've been on like Shabbatons through like NCSY and other types of organizations. And I've met plenty of people from different high schools and colleges and I've been able to interact and talk about our experiences. And it seems like everyone enjoys where they're at and they always find peace at their Jewish organization. And that's just how I feel. Um, cool. And I hope to go on more and more Shabbatons and try to expand my reach in Chabad. 
you know, we've been doing this, like I told you, you know, for about two years, and we've spoken to a number of Chabad rabbis and Rebetzins on campuses at Penn, Kansas. We spoke to Rabbi Yossi Gordon, who's the director of Chabad.edu. And people who are on the Zoom now are familiar with how incredibly successful, meaningful. Can you give us uh, uh, maybe, I don't know that anyone knows the answer to this, but what is it about Chabad on campus that is so wonderful? I mean, they don't have only the greatest uh, facility with 14 gyms and three swimming pools. They do have the best food that we know yeah. um, because I've been there. But what is it? Maybe you can help us understand what is it that makes Chabad on campus so attractive to young students who are very busy with their classwork, have a million other social activities. They don't have their parents there. You know, everyone thinks that the parents are trying to get their kids to go to Hebrew school and go to synagogue. And they come, and they love it. And we've talked to so many. What is it that makes Chabad on campus so special? For me, honestly, I think it's just the comfort you feel like, it, like being a part of Chabad, like whether it's uh, being a part of a class that we're learning about different things in the Torah or whether it's like a social event like one time we had a midnight breakfast for finals week which you know everyone during finals week is very stressed out and like packed with studying and homework and a lot of people showed up and they you know you know it's just a place to un like un like unload all your stress and kind of take some stuff off your mind and putting it off to the side for a little bit and I think it's really popular just because people when they first come to college are like, okay, well, I want to kind of meet people with the same values as me or have some similar background to me. And uh, Chabad does a great job bringing a lot of Jewish students together, no matter their background, and always giving them a comfortable, comfortable place to just interact and talk and have a good time. And as you said, eat great food. <laughs> Sruli and Shlomi, you want to unmute yourself and jump in and share with us a little bit about your experience with David and maybe some a share about a student or two. What is it about them that prompts you uh, to, to know that what you're doing is, is, is so valued and cherished? Well, um, obviously we enjoy uh, getting to spend time with all of the students that we do interact with, but David um, in particular makes it, um, he's uh, uh, one of the ones that really makes it a joy and a pleasure and um, really a privilege for us to be here doing what we do. Um, it's always such a joy to be around and uh, has been very uh, instrumental and uh, helpful in facilitating Chabad programs here on campus. And so uh, we're very grateful to him um, as well for being involved and being here and for everything that he has done and continues to do uh, for Chabad here at USC. To yeah. his credit, he's very passionate about Judaism, about Israel and stuff like that. And so he's always looking to do things, more things and it gets more involved, um, especially when it comes to like Israel and, you know, I guess educating other other students and all that. So he really brings like an excitement, a passion to whatever, you know, program that we're doing. Um, the kids absolutely adore him, especially Tinny. This is best. <laughs> He'd go home with them any day. Um, yeah, and he really kind of feel like a big family, and it's it's really nice. Um, so give us a rough idea of what the average makeup of the students who come to your Chabad like. Are they educated? Do they have a familiarity with Chabad prior to coming to campus? Are they Hebrew readers? Are they passionate about Israel? Like we hear all different things going on in you know, what they call kids today, but what, what's it like there for real on the ground? So I think we have a very uh, nice mix. Um, I think that um, most of the kids who come here will have some background in Judaism, but most of them not, uh, uh, you know, not too extensively. Um, there's a nice group of kids from David's hometown, from Myrtle Beach, who are more Israeli speaking and more uh, maybe come from a little bit more of a familiarity. Um, but then there are others from really all over the country um, who do come from a wide variety of backgrounds. And I think like David mentioned, you know, one of the, one of the things obviously as a Chabad house that we try to do is do whatever we can to make them all feel comfortable and all feel involved and you know 
um, uh, make them feel welcome, sort of no matter what their their background is. Yeah, I feel like one story comes to mind when you say that, when you ask that question, is that when we were doing the to-go packages, so we had this one girl who came. Was this during to, COVID? So set the scene for COVID. us there. Yeah, sorry, during COVID, during lockdown. So we were doing Shabbat to go. We were doing a lot of meals to go, which was, you know, really the students really loved that. And so they were coming to pick up the packages. And on one occasion, it was a Friday, and this girl came to pick up the the package and said, you know, I'm not Orthodox, I'm not religious, I don't keep kosher. You know, I just want to tell you that up front. Is it okay if I could still have a package? And I'm like, absolutely. You don't have to be religious or anything to come. So I do think there is that stereotype or that notion that you do have to have some sort of background and. I think that once students kind of like like David said, like take the leap and, and and walk through the doors, it completely like melts away any kind of stereotype or anything like that. And they immediately, you know, they never stop. They keep coming again and again and prefer that over Hillel. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> You're <laughs> amongst friends. <laughs> no, but I'm saying we're friends. But I'm saying that we're more like kind of authentic and traditional, and yet they choose to come to us even though it's not, you know only social and they enjoy it and they feel a part of it and they don't feel like forced or pushed or you know kind of yeah yeah i mean we've heard this like i said we you know we started sort of doing interviews on this side of it we had a student a couple of weeks ago uh she's in kansas and you know also did not come from any form of a quote religious background and that's she spoke to that as well about having a relationship with god it was something she had never really thought about is there a particular class david that you go to regularly we've heard about sinai scholars we've heard about the parsha classes i mean we're a bunch of old fuddy daddies here they didn't have this when the people watching were in university but maybe their kids will can you just give us maybe one little glimpse of something that you learned that was interesting to you or a class that you you attend just give us a feel for the sort of study side of it absolutely yeah so i did attend sinai scholars and i really enjoyed my time through that and then also uh we like implemented this new thing at chabada university of south carolina which is hot topic discussions so we like we'll go off like like more like things that people really think about but it's never really answered um like what do we think about like hell for example hell heaven all kinds of stuff like that and we honestly just, we get a little uh, dinner going and we just go around and discuss what we think. And Rabbi Surly will put in input and the facts and stuff. And then we'll discuss what, like how we interpret that. And it really just it, like blows your mind. Like, like all the things you've always thought about and you're like, I'll never get the answer to this. But honestly, sometimes you can get pretty close and it's, it's, a, it's a great discussion always. And it's a fun time. So even when you're learning, it definitely is still a social uh, environment and you're always having a good time, whether you're not, you're not just listening to Rabbi Sruli lecture or anything. Uh, so we all put our input in. It's a very fun, entertaining class for sure. Fantastic. If anybody wants to unmute, uh, you know, we want to be respectful of David's time and the rabbi's time and not keep them it's later there. But if anybody wants to unmute and jump in and ask a question, uh, otherwise we'll, uh, you know, we'll sort of let them go. But if anybody wants to jump in, Yes. Hey, Rabbi, I, I have two questions, one for David, one for Sruli. Okay. So where's your southern accent? <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't even hear it. There we go. Uh, I guess, I don't know who this is for. I guess this is for me. Uh, yeah. I guess being being raised uh, in an Israeli home, I didn't really, I was never really brought up with a southern background. Uh, and I guess a lot of the kids I hung out with as a kid were Israeli as well. So yeah. never stuck to me, but. I, I'll say y'all and stuff like that and have something <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, so. that's funny. An Israeli with a Southern y'all. <laughs> yeah. right. So, it, you know, it, it occurred to me, truly, really, you know, in general, how do uh, University Chabad, uh, Chabad support themselves? And in particular, you know, how, how do you, you talk about Shabbos packages during COVID. It, it, does it come fundraisers from parents or? Right. How do you, just in a nutshell, how do you manage that? Uh, it's a great question. Um, and, you know, just like any other Chabad organization, we're a very uh, grassroots uh, sort of crowdfunded. Um, we do have a tremendous amount of support from the parents of the students, alumni, um, community members. We piece it together as best we can, just like any other well, don't yeah, be shy. So we'll give us a website. Maybe somebody who's watching wants to sponsor a Shabbos here. What's your website? JewishUSC.org. 
jewishusc.org backslash donate. Don't be shy. <laughs> jewishusc.org backslash donate if somebody wants to help support. So guys like David and girls who attend can have a Shabbos to go or a class or a program. jewishusc.org. Okay. We're going to say thank you very much to David for spending the time. Really appreciate it. Just really, you're always my favorite nephew. Uh, I really appreciate your time and slow meet. You guys are really doing the Rebbe's work and bringing the message. If anybody wants to jump in and share a word, otherwise we're going to say good night. Leslie, jump in. You just got to unmute. You got to unmute. There we go. Um, about eight years ago, when my son was a sophomore at the University of Minnesota, our family went through a very difficult time. And he really was not saved by, but um, the rabbi there at the University of Minnesota, and I don't even know his last name. I just know him as Yitzi. And he, he was a lifeline for me when I was very worried about my son and I would text him and he would text me back. And Philip went to Friday night dinner there quite a bit. And I remember him saying he would never step foot into Hillel. <laughs> so I have such good feelings for campus Chabad's because it was a very needed, very much needed. So Beautiful. You're making Beautiful. a big difference. Truly, do you know who, who's the shliach at University of Minnesota? Do you know who that is? I'm sure we'd cross paths at some point, but I'll Google can't. it up. But that's not just another beautiful story about guys and women, men and women, rabbis and rebbitzin, shluchim and shluchais. They are on the campus. We know it's the hardest time, you know, when they're home, even if they're rebellious teenagers, their parents can drag them to shul. They can make them do stuff. They get to college and they got a lot of schoolwork and they got a lot of other social things. And it's amazing. I mean, go Chabad. Oh, I'm a fan. I mean, but uh, it's really remarkable to hear it. And to David, thank you for sharing yeah. with us. And we really appreciate do, your time. I, I, want to, I want to say that I do tell the students when they come that, you know, if I was a university student, I don't know that I would make the time to like really, you know, delve into my Jewish heritage and get to know, you know, but I so admire that they take the time to connect and it's really inspiring. So we're yeah. inspired to them as well. So. And it just goes to further underscore the Rebbe's message that it, to everybody has a neshama and that neshama wants nothing more than to be connected with Hashem. And the food's not bad either. But, uh, you know, the way oh. to a person's soul is through their stomach. We know that. And the social side and kids coming together. I call them kids when they're in school, coming together and loving their Yiddishkeit and loving their rabbi and their rabbitson and making a real impact that will have continuous dividends, you know, forever and ever. Well, past, as you said, you're still supported by uh, alumni who obviously appreciate what you're doing. So Yasha Koach to all of you. Thank you to everybody for joining us. Tomorrow night we'll be on to learn some Mimer and Thursday night to do some Parsha. David, thank you. Appreciate it. Really very kind. It's really in Shlomi. You're the best. Chabad, you, I'm sorry, I forgot. Right? JewishUSC.org backslash donate. If people want to come and be part of the great activities. Uh, Rabbi Yitzi Steiner, thank you. That's the Shliach at the University of Minnesota. Thank you. Somebody posted here. Rabbi Yitzi Steiner, who's a, uh, well, maybe we'll get him on. How's that? We're always looking for interesting people. So thank you very much. We'll see Thanks you tomorrow. So Good night. Good night, Good night everybody. Good night.